Hello and welcome to episode nine of the Andrew Renee podcast. Super excited for this episode. And today we have our first guest on the podcast. We have Sean Casey. He is a personal trainer from Ireland. And I would say we're decent friends at this point. Never met in person, but you know, it's funny that uh, we've kind of, we started following each other a while ago through TikTok and have kind of grown at, at similar rates. Uh, it's been kind of cool to see, but uh, anyway, Sean, if you want to take a second to introduce yourself. Uh, thanks very much for having me on, Andrew. I'm honored. I'm your I'm your first I'm your first guest. Like I didn't I didn't even realize <laughs> that. But yeah, I'm gonna try my best um to talk slow in this episode because especially a lot of my American followers on TikTok often complain that they can't understand a word that I'm saying. <laughs> so <laughs> I'll just give a I'll just give a brief introduction, sort of what I'm all about. So as Andrew said, I started making content about a year ago simply just to help people lose fat because I found a, a sort of method of fat loss that worked for me. I found out how simple it was and I wanted to educate other people how simple it is, especially when there's just so much bullshit out there. So I've been making content for about a year. I'm a personal trainer in person and online. So I have my own online business on that front, which I've actually grown. Like when I first started making content, I wasn't a personal trainer. I was just doing it to help people for free and it's grown into a business, which is uh, which is pretty cool. So I literally, I make TikToks, I make YouTube videos, I try and simplify the process of fat loss for everyone and I try and just be lighthearted. I literally do not take myself seriously at all. Anyone that knows me in person, I speak the same way in podcasts. I speak the same way in my content that I do if you see me in person. So I try and be led back. I try and actually be myself because there's enough people that aren't themselves online. And I just talk about fat loss and how to lose fat for the most part. <laughs> Amazing. I love it. And I always say like, you know, being yourself is the easiest thing you can ever be because there is, you know, nothing to try, nothing, nothing to do, nothing you have to remember. It's just like, you know, being yourself, it, it actually, when it, when it comes into like, you know, mental health, it, it can help with a lot of feelings of anxiety because it's like, you don't have to wear that mask all the time and remember how to be, you can just be. Mm -hmm. um, exactly say, say if um say if i was pretending to be someone else online and then when you go out in public and people are always expecting you to act a certain way you, you're like you're you're putting on a mask someone asked me in one of my instagram q and a's the other day do you would you change who you are to be to to try and impress other people and i said you can't you can't change who you are you can pretend to be someone else but you can never truly ch change who you are you'll attract the sort of right the the right sort of people for you and the, the wrong sort of people won't there'll always be people that won't like you no matter what you do so you may as well just chill the fuck out and be yourself like <laughs> do whatever the fuck you want exactly yeah. i love it um awesome yeah so for those listening um thank you so much for tuning in really appreciate it uh typically i i focus on things like i do on my tiktoks on the mental health side of things but physical health has been something that I've actually been interested in for longer than mental health. It's something I'm still interested in. It's just, you know, the way my content sort of went, uh, went down more of a mental health direction, but I do think there's a lot of crossover in the mental health, physical health space. And I just wanted to take this episode to kind of clear up a lot of the, the bullshit that's out there. Cause even people I talk to who seemingly are fairly smart and seem to know what they're talking about. When it comes to things like weight loss, it's just such a, a polarizing topic. It's, it's kind of unbelievable. And I've even made, you know, a few TikToks that are like full day of eating type stuff. And, you know, all of a sudden I have a hundred people coming out saying, telling me how shitty my diet is and how I need to change it. And like, <laughs> you know, too many processed foods, like blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, oh my God, I can't yeah. imagine if this was all my content, like how I would, I deal with trolls here and there, but like it really brings them out. It's tough, man. It's tough. <laughs> oh my gosh. Like how, how have you found dealing with the, cause I see, sometimes I'll see your comments back and they're like, so funny back to people just like kind of putting them in their place. And a lot of times, you know, the people commenting are, you know, they have zero followers, no profile picture. And it's like, they're telling you how to live your life. And I just, we can get into this a little bit more, but I find it interesting that, that people are so apt to give you their opinion on something. And, and for example, like with my diet, I, I typically eat, you know, like, like high volume type things. It's decent, some like processed stuff, but like decent amount of clean stuff. Like I'll have some big salads, massive spinach wraps, stuff like that. And it's like, if I eat a diet that I enjoy, I'm in good shape, I feel good. I look good, gives me energy. Like, what is this? I don't know. There's like this need to like tell people how they need to eat clean. And I'm curious, like how you kind of 
talk about that and, and manage people who who have this idea that like you have to eat clean and that's like the way that you have to be yeah well the, the main thing that people need to understand is there's no one best diet for everyone everyone needs to take a completely individualized approach there's no diet, no matter how clean your diet is or what the foods you eat and they're rich in this and that you're still going to die no matter what diet you eat you're eventually going to die and i'm not saying that that's an excuse to go out and just eat complete and other shite obviously you still need to you still need to have some sort of structure to your diet but the thing is with a diet and with fat loss there's some basic principles that you need to stick to and it's often over complicated so if you want to lose fat you need to be in a calorie deficit you've probably heard people talking about this before a calorie deficit is literally when you eat less calories than you burn so when you eat less calories and you burn, you're not giving your body enough energy. So your body needs to go to its fat stores to get the energy. That is the only way that you can lose fat. So anyone in the history of the entire world that has ever lost fat has done so by being in a calorie deficit. No matter what, no matter if they know it or if they don't or if they say it's this or that, it is because they're in a calorie deficit. So once you have this information, you can base your diet around that. You know. I need to be in a calorie deficit. It's not a diet. It's the principle like you literally have to be in it if you want to lose fat. But the way in which you go about creating that deficit is going to be completely individualized from person to person. And that's why you don't necessarily have to clean to lose fat and be healthy. You need to eat, eat in a deficit. But the foods that you eat don't have to be just clean. Like it's not like av avocados equal, equal weight loss and fucking donuts equal weight gain. Calories uh, uh, equate the weight loss and weight gain. The actual composition and the nutrient composition of your foods can affect your energy levels, your get, like your health in general. Obviously, if you're eating a really shitty, shitty diet that's just completely awful, you're going to feel shit. You're probably going to be have a lower immune system. But in terms of a fat loss perspective, calories are the most important thing. Now, that's not saying that the calories are all that matters, but they're the most important from fat loss. You need to be in a calorie deficit. The way I like to build my diet up is sort of. 80% nutritious whole foods, protein rich, micronutrient rich, that's going to give you energy and the nutrients that you need. And then 20% of the foods that you love. Now, the foods that you love can be literally anything crisps, sweets, chocolate. And this means that it's sustainable. If you're someone that wants to lose fat, or even if you're not someone that wants to lose fat, I think that the 80 20 rule is a great way so you can get the nutrients that you need, but also enjoy your dad. Because people need to remember that you're here on life to enjoy it. So if you eat loads of foods that you literally hate, for no purpose, like literally no purpose at all. That doesn't make you any more healthier. Like you could eat nothing but avocados and apples and everything. But if you're in a calorie surplus consistently, you will eventually become obese. So there's no such thing per se as a good or bad food. There's just a good and a bad diet. I like to make it the 80 20 rule. And if you want to lose fat, you need to be in a deficit. You need to make a protein goal. We'll go into more, more details like that later. But that's the basic gist, gist of it. Anyone that's ever lost fat, whether they've cut carbs, whether they've started running, whether they've joined a slimming club literally anything that they've done is just a way of creating a calorie deficit and once you have this information and once you have that knowledge you're like oh it makes sense because everyone always has that family relative that uh, was overweight and then they lose lots of weight they come to a family get together and everyone's like how do you lose the weight what did you do what did you do and they're saying oh i done this and then you have another family relative saying oh i done this oh so that's what you need to do but if they just understood that that person created a calorie deficit no matter what they've done the, the methods that they use created a calorie deficit. What you can do is go off and find your own method of creating a deficit. So it doesn't have to be a one shoe fits all, but the principles always remain the same. So a, a, a rule of thumb is you don't have to eat clean. Don't listen to people that tell you have to, to cut things out of your diet. Don't listen to people that you have to count, count your chemicals. The basic principles always remain the same and your method of creating them principles is can be completely individualized that's where it chops and changes from person to person definitely yeah i think that's i hope i, hope I didn't ramble too much there no that was that was perfect <laughs> i think you hit the nail on the head like that's that's the main principle that like so many people out there so many fucking tiktok influencers like they're they're saying these things that like at the end of the day, it is just a calorie deficit and, and people like almost demonize it. I've even heard people say that like being in a calorie deficit is unhealthy because it like fucks with your hormones and blah, blah, blah. And it's like, no, it's literally, it's not even a diet. It's like literally how you lose weight, whether you know that you're in it or not, if the weight on the scale is going down, that is what you're doing. And it's something like I had never grown up. I had always been like kind of on the skinnier side, like leaner. 
And it was just in quarantine last year when quarantine hit back in, uh, back in March, I just, for whatever reason, I was like 188, 190. That's usually where I was in college. And I just wanted to get down to 175 and I just like figured I'd feel better, you know, look a little bit better. And so I, I, I started doing that. And after a couple months, I was like two months in and I had just been eating the same things that my mom made, like relatively normal type meals, you know, like pasta dishes, chicken parm, uh, like fish with veggies, just like a bunch, like normal type meals. And, uh, and I was just eating less of them because I knew that being in a calorie deficit, I was like tracking everything pretty closely. Uh, and then I came across like the high volume type eating a lot of the stuff that you preach, a lot of stuff you post about. And it was like this, you like, I don't know, like my eyes were finally opened. Like I was like, holy <laughs> shit. Cause I've been doing two months of like, just being in a deficit, just to like be in a deficit, eating the same types of foods, just knowing that like I had to eat fewer calories than I consumed, but I was going to bed like fairly hungry, but I was like, you know, I'm, I'm disciplined enough to, I could do it for two months. And then I realized this and I was like, holy shit. Like I'm still, I'm eating less. I'm eating like I can eat like 1500 calories. And if I go extreme with like the highest volume stuff, like I can be full at the end of the day. And then I can have like 500 calorie dessert or something like piece of cake or two. And it's like, mm. I'm still in a deficit. And it was just like, so unbelievable that I started, that's kind of what actually got me into content. I started like posting the recipes that I had seen through some YouTube influencers. And it was just like, it was just kind of crazy to me is that I know you post about a lot of high volume stuff. Is that typically where you, what you veer towards? Cause I feel like it just makes it so much easier to be in a calorie deficit or like, did you, was there a point when you discovered that along your journey? Yeah. So with, with the volume eating, what, what people often don't understand is the thing that you have to eat less in order to lose fat being in a calorie deficit doesn't necessarily mean that you have to eat less food just because you have to eat less calories. If you can sort of start to prioritize lower calorie, higher volume foods, you can actually eat a lot more food volume with less calories. So it helps you stay full in the deficit from a mental standpoint as well. I'm someone with a massive appetite. So if there's a really small calorie dance meal in front of me, that's like 500 calories, I will munch it in about literally two seconds. But I, if I have a big, massive, massive salad with loads of veg and stuff, it's going to take me longer to eat. The brain signals go into my head. Like the longer it takes you to eat something, the more full you're going to be. If you rush through your foods and it's really calorie dense, you can just eat it quite quickly. So while no matter what food you eat, as long as you're in a deficit, you're going to you're going to lose fat different foods can affect how you feel in that deficit and if you prioritize higher volume foods you're going to feel fuller and you're going to feel better one of the most fucking ridiculous things people say is oh you shouldn't track your calories you shouldn't be in a calorie deficit because you can't just eat donuts and you can't just eat crisps no one and i mean no one starts tracking their calories and just eats crisps and sweets and chocolates and donuts because once you start tracking your calories you only have a certain amount of calories to do you for the day it, i sort of compare it to like a budget so if you had a certain amount of money say you had 20 grand in the bank you're not going to go and buy a car that's like 20 grand because then that's all your money gone you don't have a house you don't have food you don't have anything so with a calorie deficit and when, when you're tracking your calories and sticking to a certain amount you're not going to waste 600 800 calories on say for example uh, or you're not going to you're not going to waste your full day's calories on a d donuts crisps sweets and chocolate that are going to take you maybe 20 minutes to eat when and it's going to be like literally three or four items of food when you could have like four or five massive meals filled with like veg and salads and protein and all these quote unquote clean healthy foods that people preach that you should you have to eat but when you're in a deficit you actually you you lean more towards these foods and you start eating more of them you start eating quote unquote healthier because it makes you feel better but you still have allowance for the foods that you love so instead of just being like oh i'm only going to eat clean or as some people say if you're tracking your calories you must only eat, only eat like dirty foods like if you can just have a mix of both, but mostly prioritize the higher volume foods, it's going to make you feel better because at the end of the day, when you're in a deficit, you're depriving your body of energy. So it's not going to be feasible just to eat shite all the time. You want to eat mostly good foods and it just makes, it makes the process a lot easier. And it's, it's almost like a hack. You're discovering all these high volume foods and stuff. And you're like, I'm losing fat, but I can eat all this food. It makes it, it makes it so much easier. So I, I guess to sum all that up, 
you need to be in a deficit to lose fat. You don't have to eat high volume foods. You don't have to eat loads of fruit and veg and stuff like that, but it helps a lot from an energy standpoint, from a satiation standpoint. So how full you actually feel in that deficit, it just is going to make the process a lot easier. But the main thing is you don't have to do it. It's just an option. There's lots of different options, but in my opinion, volume eating and uh, trying to prioritize higher volume foods uh, makes the process easy. Definitely. Yeah. And I feel like, like you mentioned, kind of that process of eating clean, it almost happens naturally. Like once you understand the principle that like, you know, your maintenance calories say is 3000 and you want to lose fat at a decent rate, you know, you got to eat 2,500 calories a day. And it's like, so you're working with a set amount. So like you can have this meal, like you can have pasta and you get, you know, this much. And it's like, you know, hundreds of calories, or you can have, you know, this massive plate of fish and like broccoli and other vegetables. And, you know, you season it, it tastes pretty good. Or you do like, you know, a uh, stir fry or uh, egg white scramble or something like that. And it's like, mm-hmm. it's like a massive dish. And it's like, you have this pasta over here and it's like, well, of course you're going to choose that. Cause like your limited calories, you, d- you want to feel good. You want to feel full. So it's like, you can eat the pasta, but it's either you kind of have to choose. It's either you eat a tiny bit and you stay in a deficit and you're hungry or you eat a lot. You're no longer in a deficit and you're full. But so that's, it's, it's funny. Cause like my mom will make like a pasta dish or something. And like, sometimes I'll, I'll try it out. Like I'll have some, but a lot of times I'm just like, honestly, it's, it's not even worth. Cause if I'm, especially if I'm wanting, trying to lose weight, like cutting a little bit, like I'm like, it's literally not even worth me eating it. Cause I know how many other things I can eat to be full, feel good, like get my protein in. And so it's not that I, I don't like pasta. I think it tastes amazing most of the time, but it's like, it's just becomes not even worth consuming just because you know how calorie dense it is. So it almost that process of eating clean, like clean or happens like naturally in, in a mm-hmm. sense. Yeah, hundred percent. And it's a, it's all about as well. You know, that you're not, you no foods are off limit. So, you know, everyone knows yourself, like I could have like that pasta dish if I want to, but you just know that it's going to take up a lot of your daily calories. And when people often try and start to try try to lose fat and they're going to start eating healthier, they're going to start eating cleaner. What they actually sort of fear towards is these quote unquote healthy foods. So you'll have a lot of avocados, oils, pastas, and a lot of people are just spinning their wheels because they're trying really hard and they're eating these healthy foods, but they're not making any progress. And they're wondering, why am I not making any progress? I was eating loads of shit. I was eating loads of crisps and sweets and chocolate all the time. And I was, my weight was staying the same. So I wanted to lose weight. So I started eating cleaner and now my weight's still staying the same, or some of them are even gaining weight. But what you need to understand is the caloric uh, density of these foods can be extremely high. So even though they're healthy, even though they have nutrients, if they're bringing you above your maintenance calories, you're literally not going to lose any fat. Now, that's not to say that you should avoid these foods because you most certainly should not avoid any foods. There's no foods that are off limits, but you do need to bring some sort of awareness awareness to the calorie contents of these foods because as I keep saying, calories are the most important thing. Calories aren't all that matters. There's lots of different things that matters. For example, your protein goal, your micronutrients, different things like that. But from a a purely weight loss, weight gain uh, perspective, calories are the most important thing. There's no getting around that. There is literally, there's no, there's no chance that uh, it's not even up for debate anymore. If anyone tries to debate it, they're an idiot. Like there is, there, there's two sides of the spectrum. Some people say calories are all that matters. And other people say calories don't matter at all. Obviously both people are wrong. Like there's, there's more to it than calories, but they're the most important thing. You can't get around it. Any study in the history of the world that like a calorie deficit works every time, 100% of the time. And that's, that's the sort of, that's the amazing thing about it. So I, I was talking about something there before when oh yeah that's why that's why tracking your calories um is, is in my opinion is important because a lot of people say you should just like um you should just eat clean and stuff but if you're not actually aware of the the calorie contents in these different foods there's no way to know tracking your calories will literally be the most educational experience you will ever go through in your life you will learn more about your eating than you could ever do like previous like you don't have to track your calories for the rest of your life but the process of tracking your calories for a few weeks a few months is going to teach you so so much that is going to like you can go to an intuitive eating approach after you track your calories but there's no way that you can intuitively eat before you track your calories because you're simply just not aware of the different calorie contents in the food so obviously there is some people that tracking isn't suitable for and there's different uh, techniques and I actually talk about this in my TikTok as well but for most people tracking your calories is fine it's not it's not like that's like saying no one should have knives because some people stab people like 
tracking your calories is a tool that you can use to your advantage. So don't be put off it by people saying that you shouldn't view your foods as calories or you shouldn't track your calories. Because at the same time, I keep saying calories aren't at all, it's all, all that matters, but they are the most important thing and what your main focus should be on. And if you track your calories, you will indirectly start eating healthier, quote unquote healthier, and you will start learning more about your eating habits and it'll teach you so much. So I would never be uh, thrown off tracking your calories just because someone says that you shouldn't. Definitely. Yeah. I think that process of tracking your calories is super important just even for like a few months, just to give yourself and I even like, you know, do it for a week and just <clears throat> realize how many fucking calories are in some of the things that you're eating. It's like unbelievable. Like you measure out the oil and actually this, this reminds me of uh, one of my roommates was uh, when I got back from quarantine, I was living in New York at the time and I was home and I was getting into all this high volume stuff. And he was like, Andrew, I want to lose 10 pounds. Like, how do I do it? I was like, like, you can track calories if you want, but like, you can honestly just make a few swaps. Cause I had seen him like cook stuff and he like, you know, he'd take the olive oil bottle and like turn it over completely oh, upside oh, down. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And I was like, so like, look at that olive oil bottle that you use <clears throat> that has like, you know, 8,000 calories in the whole thing. And it's not that big. And you're using like, an eighth of it in your pan. Now, maybe your food isn't soaking all of it up, but that's a thousand calories. So if you just do a couple things like that, like, you know, even just when you're doing that, just like use some cooking spray and just do a couple sprays. It's still like you has the same use and it's not even like olive oil or any sort of oil tastes that good. It's just like, you know, mixed with some stuff. Maybe it does, yeah. but even just doing that. And he did that. And then he thought like he hated running, but like he, he thought he had to run. And I was like, no, actually you can just go on walks. Like you pretty much burn the same amount of calories, like per mile when those are equated. And so he like started incorporating a little more walks, stopped dumping his olive oil and he lost five, <laughs> five pounds in like a few weeks and he was like yeah. oh my god and it's like it was just like a slight swap so do you ever find that like sometimes you can just tell someone to like you know make a couple swaps because if you're not losing or gaining weight kind of doing the same thing and then you just make a couple changes to your lifestyle like i feel like it can have just a massive impact just from yeah. a couple things that don't really take away from your lifestyle at all I guarantee with 99% of people's diets and lifestyle, I could switch out at least five or six things that they wouldn't even notice that would make, like if their goal, goal is fat loss, that would make them lose fat instantly. Like a lot of people, again, it's just the, not, not, not the, they don't have their awareness of the calories. So they might be using, they might be waking up in the morning and they're not actually eating that much, but they're having full fat milk with cereal and they're not weighing it. And they're having like six, 700 calories because of the milk and the cereal in the morning. And they don't even notice that. Whereas if they just had slightly less cereal and had some almond unsweetened milk, they're literally having like, not even joking, like a quarter of the calories. Again, with the olive oil, if you use like some like a one cow spray instead of that there's so many different swaps that you can make if you're having a normal full fat yogurt you go for the zero percent um fat greek yogurt instead I'm trying to think off the top of my head some, some other ones if you're having sugary drinks like coke and fanta and stuff go for the sugar-free options they literally taste exactly the same the studies on artificial sweeteners in the sugar-free options show that they're completely safe for human consumption obviously you need to take an individualized approach some people don't react well to them just like some people don't react well to different foods so if you don't feel good on the sugar-free drinks obviously avoid them but for most people they're completely safe in moderation so it wouldn't be it wouldn't be thrown off them so say for example you have sugary drinks full fat milk and olive oil but you switch that to the sugar-free drink uh the sugar-free drinks almond on sweetened milk um and one cal spray you're literally saving like thousands of calories like probably about a thousand calories per day which is going to have you instantly drop. if you're maintaining your weight and then you make them changes it's going to have you instantly dropping as well as that if you just set a step goal each day like it's not it's it's nothing crazy like you don't have to go out in crazy runs you don't have to do hit training and all this fucking mad stuff set a step goal go for a daily walk you're going to be burning loads of extra calories walking is fucking amazing because you can do it every day it's really easy in your body so you don't need time to recover from it if you implement one daily walk into your day not only is it amazing for your physical health helping you burn calories get out of the house but your mental health as well getting out and just clearing your head going for a walk is so so important especially at the minute when so many people are cooped up in their house a lot of people 
aren't leaving the house at all bar going on a shopping trip some people are even getting fucking online shopping because they're so scared to leave the house see the importance of walking it goes far behind far beyond physical health and the mental health as well but that's just a few few things switch out for some lower calorie alternatives go for a daily walk it's not rocket science but even though people make it out like it's rocket science it's actually quite simple and so simple things that add up and will improve the quality of your life and help you achieve your goals in terms of fitness Definitely, hundred <clears throat> percent. Yeah, I'm a I'm a huge fan of walking. <clears throat> Anyone who follows me or any of my friends listening, like, no, I fucking like walk all the time, and I never really go on runs. Like, so I used to like get into running here and there, and then I'd always get sore or just like you know I'd need a day or two to like go on another run, and it's like you know I was running maybe two miles, three miles because I'm not in I wasn't in like amazing shape. I wasn't going on like twelve mile runs, and then I can if I just take the time each day to do something that I enjoy, like walking, I listen to a podcast, listen to an audio book. And I, I can, you know, I've been averaging this month, like eight miles of walking a day. And now I obviously that's like extreme people don't definitely don't have to be walking eight or nine miles. <laughs> but like, it, it's not that hard to do. It takes, you know, a few hours. But like, if you do some things, you're able to kind of multitask while you're doing it. So I just like, can't say enough about walking. But uh, what you're talking about before with like just having the knowledge and making a few swaps. I think people get hung up on this idea that in order to lose weight, in order to get in shape, you need to be super disciplined. Like you got to start eating super clean, start running, start doing hit workouts twice a day. And it's not, it's like, all you need is just a little bit more knowledge, a little bit more awareness of the things you're putting in your body and the things that you're doing and understanding that like, you know, that 10 minutes of hit is not going to burn like 500 calories over the next week because you did hit and your heart rate got up like just go on a, go on a walk it's way more enjoyable and then just make a few swaps like realize the things that you're putting in your body like you can make a quick switch it tastes exactly the same there's no discipline required no like willpower it's just the awareness i think is just like mm -hmm. the biggest thing over over any of the others People think that they have to make all these sort of crazy changes. So a lot of the time when someone wants to lose fat, they'll be like, right, I need a complete lifestyle change here. I need to start getting in shape and losing fat. And the fir first few weeks to be like, fuck, let's do this. I'm going to cut out all of my favorite foods because that's what I need to do to lose fat. I'm going to start doing head training five times a week. And do they lose fat? Of course they lose fat because they're in a fucking calorie deficit. But after two weeks, they get sick of it. They want some pizza again. They realize that they're absolutely doing a hit doing head training in their living room. And eventually they'll just go back to their old habits because they think it's almost like a switch it's like an all or nothing mentality so they think if i want to lose fat and get in shape i have to do all this i have to cut out all my favorite foods i have to do the head training but in reality you don't have to do that at all all you have to do is create a calorie deficit so if you can take a more sustainable option instead go for a daily walk don't cut out all your favorite foods. Try and prioritize the volume of foods to keep you full in your deficit, but still have your favorite foods if you want and fit them in with your calories instead of going for like an all or nothing mindset. A lot of people spin their wheels when they do that. So what will happen is they'll go, they'll go completely do like all clean eating and um, loads of exercise for a couple of weeks. And then they'll realize that they, they can't do it. And then they'll go back to their old habits for a couple of weeks and they'll be like, right, I want to get back in the bandwagon. And then they'll go back. And it's just like a constant back and forth cycle when they don't actually understand that they don't have to do this. They just have this in their head. I could never be in shape. I could never lose weight because I'm not like them people. I can't do the exercise. I can't eat the clean foods. You don't have to. There's just the basic principles that you have to stick to. A lot of people are probably listening to this and being like, he's saying the same thing here because it doesn't change. People try and overcomplicate it because they want to make money off you. They want to boost their own ego and they want to seem smarter than they actually are. I'm just telling you like it is. It doesn't change. It's always been in a deficit. The way you create that deficit is up to you. If you're someone that is a complete and fucking utter health freak and you want to do hit training five times a week and you want to only eat clean foods, no one's saying you can't. You're still going to lose fat. I'm not saying that that doesn't work. I'm saying everything works as long as you're in a deficit. So the, the way in which you create that deficit is going to depend on you. Like if you're fucking David Goggins and you want to run every day, you can be my guest. But if you're fucking normal sand, you're down the road and you just want to go for a daily walk, eat in a sustainable deficit and lose fat like a normal person because you're not fucked in the head, that is probably a good idea. <laughs> Without a doubt. Yeah, I feel like people get so hung up on like these quick fixes and just like this idea, like they have this idea of like, to lose weight, you have to eat clean, you have to, you know, start running. It's like all the like, you have to do loads and loads of cardio. And it's just like, it's actually very simple principles. And I feel like, you know, life is actually 
fairly, fairly simple. And I talk about this sometimes, but like, you know, like you said, people like to overcomplicate it because that's how you make money. You don't make money off of telling people that, you know, if they get enough sleep, drink a decent amount of water, you know, eat in a calorie deficit, if they're trying to lose weight or eat at maintenance or whatever, like you don't, you, it's hard or to make money off that unless, you know, you're coaching and people want to, you know, spend money on that. But like most of the time, these people get, get into these, like, ideas that they need to they need to do all of these specific things and i think maybe they try that at first it doesn't work for them so they they want to and this is something else i wanted to get into like get into these loopholes of like these fad diets like like keto like the idea not that intermittent fasting is a fad diet but it's like this idea that it's like a way around this like calorie deficit idea. It's like, I don't want to do a calorie deficit. So I'm going to do this or this or this. And like, how, how do you kind of bring people back to center when they're like, well, I did keto and it worked for me. And, or I do intermittent fasting and like intermittent fasting because your insulin spikes here, like you can't lose fat when your insulin spikes. So your insulin's got to be low. And this is something that I actually believed for a while, like basically yeah. until sorry to hear year. that, man. Sorry to hear <laughs> yeah. that. <laughs> yeah, like I literally gave a presentation to my office like two and a half years ago about intermittent fasting and how important it was. And I've now since shifted to the light side, the good guys side over here. But uh-huh. I followed people, you know, like Jason Fung. And I was like, you know, this guy seems so smart. He make it makes so much sense. Like, of course, you know, your, your insulin has to be low in order to lose fat. And then it was like, I would think about these people that, you know, didn't, they ate throughout the day, didn't fast ever, except for when they were sleeping and they were, you know, losing weight or in really good shape. And it's like, it's funny. Cause I didn't even really like acknowledge that. And I was just talking to my mom about this. I was about like, you know, what I want to talk about on this podcast. And it's like, I didn't even acknowledge the fact that like, there were people doing other things. I was like, no, you, you have to do intermittent fasting. It's Mm -hmm. the only way like Dr. Fung says it and he's a smart guy. And it's Mm -hmm. like, I feel like it's so, it's just like a really difficult for people to, to kind of figure out and come to this conclusion and like that it's, it's kind of simple and they don't have to do some like quick fix or, or crazy thing. I think the the first thing to point out is Dr. Jason Fong is a fucking idiot. Um, (laughs) I've also come to that conclusion. (laughs) Do um, not follow that man. (laughs) Next thing we need to sort of look at here, uh, I think this is the best way to break it down for people who are so stuck in their ways. People that do keto tell you that carbohydrates make you fat. Some people do a low low fat diet and they say the fat makes you fat. Some people are vegan and they say that you should only eat plants. Other people are carnivore and say that you should only eat um, meat. Some people are like, what, what, what's the other ones that it's just completely stiff. Some people fast. Some other people say that you need to eat small meals each time of the day. All of these people are so stuck in their ways and they're so certain. They're certain that they have the answer to weight loss, but they're all doing completely opposite things. And they're all arguing with each other about what's the best way to do it. Well, my way is better than your way. Your way is better than my way. But then you have me in the middle. I'm saying, Jason, guys, chill the fuck out. The only reason that any of your methods work is because you're creating a calorie deficit and you can use all the fancy lingo and the fancy words that you want and say it's because of your insulin and this and that. But realistically, you're just creating a calorie deficit. If you're intermittent fasting, you're eating less because you have less time to eat. So you're consuming less calories. If you're doing a ketogenic diet, you're literally not eating fucking carbohydrates. That's a full macronutrient. That's a lot of foods that you can't eat. So you're eating less calories. If you're doing vegan, if you're doing carnivore, there's lots of foods that you can't eat. So you're literally eating less calories. And while all all these people are arguing about their method and what the best way is, I'm literally saying all of them work. They all work. But the reason that they work isn't why you're saying they work. The reason that they work is because it's creating a calorie deficit. So Dr. Jason Fong, he seems like a smart guy. He is a smart guy. I don't, I, I don't, I don't understand. He is a smart guy. He knows what he's saying is wrong. If you look at the studies, Look at the fucking studies, Jason. The meta-analysis is a completion of multiple studies. Any meta-analysis shows that when calories and protein are equated, fat loss is always the same. It doesn't matter where you're low carb, low fat, fasting, not fasting. It is literally the same. So I don't understand how people can sit here and say that you need to fast or you need to cut carbs because you don't. It's literally common knowledge that you don't. Jason Fong's main sort of his main sort of punchline is there's no money in fasting. That's why no one talks about it. Jason, mate, 
you've got a fucking course on fasting. You have a course on how not to eat. Of course, you're making money in it. You're making money off telling people that there's no money in it. So when you have all these people saying all these different things and you can buy into it because a lot of doctors say stupid things. There is a doctor for everything. There's a fat doctor now. There's a vegan doctor. There's a carnivore doctor, a fasting doctor. Why can't you just be a fucking doctor? Like there is smart people and people with qualifications and degrees to back up any opinion. You can get studies to back up any opinion, but at the end of the day, the principles always remain the same. And once you realize this, you can do whatever method you want. I have clients that use intermittent fasting because they don't like breakfast. So I said, don't eat breakfast. And if they stop eating after a certain time, it helps them consume less calories. I don't tell them that it's magic. I've had to put the clients on uh, ketogenic diets last resort because they're really str struggling with appetite. The ketogenic diet can be a good appetite regulator, but it only works, works because it's creating a calorie deficit. I have no issue if someone wants to do a ketogenic diet because appetite reasons, they realize that it's still, they still need to be in a deficit. Everyone's different. If you want to do a vegan diet, a carnivore diet, you can do what you want. All of them work, but the reason why they work is a calorie deficit. I don't know. Yeah. Couldn't have said it better myself. Yeah. There's a, when you bring up vegan, I just find it funny because there's uh, down the street from our house here, there's a new vegan restaurant that just popped up and it's like all fried vegan food. And I just like, my family like knows that that would just like absolutely grind my gears because it's like all of these people going here, like thinking, and it's, it's interesting because even though maybe they know that like it's not, they're not going to lose a lot of weight. There's still this stigma that like, oh, well, it's a little bit healthier because it's like, but it's like, who created this idea that meat was, was bad for you? Like I get, if you're like really into, you know, animals and like all that stuff and you, and you don't like the, the industry or whatever, like by all means, but like to tie it into like health, it's like most of the people I've ever heard of doing vegan, like feel like shit, smell like shit. They don't lose <laughs> any weight. And it's like this idea that like there's entire like businesses, like restaurants that are like strictly vegan marketing everything as being healthy. And I think it's like this kind of polarization and I don't even know how they get away with it because everything is fried, but it's like this polarization between like healthy and the sense of like helpful for weight loss and like healthy in the sense of like, you know, clean food. And sometimes I talk to people about this and it's like, well, this is healthy. And they'll just like blanket statement, like this is healthy, like avocados, for example, are healthy. And it's like, okay, like, yeah, they have some micronutrients for you, but it's going to completely depend on your goals. And I'm curious, like how you direct that conversation when like, I don't know if you, you probably like hear about this a lot, just like the difference between like, you know, healthy for like being helpful for weight loss versus like, and maybe it's like processed or whatever versus like healthy. Cause it's, cause it's clean. Yeah, see, a lot of a lot of people just they, they, they say the word health and they don't actually know what it means. Like, what what does it actually mean to be to be healthy? It, being healthy, it, it can mean a wide variety of different things. So people will go to a vegan diet or they'll go to a certain diet because it's healthy, but they want to lose fat. There's a difference between weight loss and health, and the two can definitely interchange. And a lot of the time, when people go on a sustainable deficit and lose fat that improves all their health markers simply by being in a calorie deficit. Now, from a purely health standpoint, there's different foods that contain micronutrients that can help with bodily functions, your immune system, et cetera. But if your goal is fat loss, the most important thing is to lose fat. And that's going to make you healthier than any of these other small minor details. So the word health, like a lot, a lot of people, they just don't understand what it means. So I would say to anyone like trying to pick a new diet, pick something that's sustainable because at the end of the day, if you try and, optimize every last single bit of your life you're not going to have any room left to enjoy your life you're here for a limited time you want to try and make decent food decisions you want to control the amount of calories that you're eating you want to have a decent body composition so you can remain overall healthy but you could do absolutely everything you could go vegan you could take all the health supplements etc you're still going to die one day it's not going to massively massively improve the quality of your life if you are some sort of complete health freak like mo mo the, the point I'm trying to get most, most of these differences are trivial. Most of them are completely trivial. A lot of people will do these different diets and if they're going to get sick, they'll still get sick. It's largely just depends on the macro things, not the micro things. So the amount of calories you're eating, your protein, trying to eat mostly nutritious foods, trying to eat a balanced diet with lots of different stuff, carbs for energy, vegetables, fruit, like don't be stupid. Like there's not, it's not one, it's not like specific things that you need. It's not the minor details. It's the bigger picture that people often miss. 
Definitely. Yeah. And, and when people, you know, they'll talk about this idea of, of health and healthy foods and clean eating. And I've always said like, this might be on not to be like extreme or anything, but like if someone say, for example, just like take it to a bit of an extreme is like, you know, 30% body fat and they, so like, and they're eating clean, but they're eating like in a surplus, they're, they're unable to get into a deficit because they just, you know, have a massive appetite and like eating clean, maybe they're not eating a ton of vegetables. So they're not eating a bunch of low calorie dense foods. So like, in my opinion, I feel like getting to 25% or 20% body fat from 30% in like whatever way that they can is, will be better for them. Like they'll feel better. They'll look better versus like doing that in like an unclean way, not necessarily like, you know, donuts and, and cookies, but like maybe more processed foods, just something that like helps them get there in whatever way versus eating strictly clean, like super hardcore and staying at that 30% body fat. So like on those two extremes, like, have you found people that have, have done that? Or like, what, what are your opinions on that? Yeah, I think if someone's uh, overweight, it's always better to lose weight. But a lot of people think that it's one or the other. That's why a lot of people associate tracking your calories with just eating unhealthy. It is an extremely rare occurrence, as I've said, that someone's just going to eat complete shite like crisps, sweets and chocolate all the time to lose fat because they'll realize that they can't do it because they don't have the energy. They're always hungry and it just won't work out. So in my opinion, it's better to get a balance of both. So you want to be in a deficit. You want to be eating, trying to eat nutritious foods, but you also want to have room for the food foods that you love because you can do that and people demonize it and they, they do the uh, again they do the all or nothing mentality like oh if i'm just eating clean i have to eat clean or if i'm just eating bad i have to eat completely bad you can have a balance of both balance is the most important thing but like if from a weight loss perspective it's better to lose weight than just eat loads of clean foods and stay at an unhealthy weight and at the end of the day it's the quality of your life too it's how you look and feel in the mirror like if someone's overweight and they're happy with being overweight i have no issue with that i'm not going to give someone weight loss advice that doesn't want it but if someone's overweight and they want to lose weight there's this sort of thing now that apparently that's fat phobic that if you want to lose weight if you're looking in the body if you're looking in the mirror and you're unhappy with your body you're not confident with your body and you want to make a change to feel better to feel more confident to move better to improve your quality of your life that it's the most important thing that you can do so the main thing is find a way that you can do that find a method of creating the deficit that you can sustain and stop freaking out so much about optimizing every last bit of your health well, yeah, I think I think balance is so key for for everything. Yeah, the the idea that if you want to lose weight, you're fat phobic. It's like people need to fucking stay in their lane once in a while. Like, mm. just fucking mind your business. Like, if Crazy. I want to do something with my body, like I let you do whatever the fuck you want with your body. Like, why are you coming at me? Because I want it. Like, it's absolutely. It just I I can't even understand where that where that idea comes from. Like, how does that even, how does that even come into someone's mind that like, if I want to lose weight for myself, just because I want to, like, I don't even need any good reason whatsoever. Like, how did that even come to be that that's fat phobic? Like, I'm not involved as involved in this side of things, but like, how does that, I don't even understand. I can't wrap my head around how that becomes fat phobic. I have absolutely no fucking idea. I think the person that made that TikTok also said it was racist. Uh, so that just discredits any argument that she had at all. Oh my goodness. Yeah, it's it's unbelievable what some people are pulling out of their assets these they're days. They're just it's just they're just making it up as they go along and they're trying to it's it's like I said with the that nutrition, a lot of these people will actually look very hard and dig deep to find different specific words and a study from a million years ago to back up their completely deluded opinion and then they'll convince themselves that it's real and everyone will literally be telling them like what the fuck are you talking about? And they'll still try and fight back. Like, oh no, like if you go to the gym, you're definitely fat phobic. Like, shut the fuck up. It's it's crazy. Like, I don't even, I don't even like talking about it because it, it's just yeah. madness. It's just absolutely fries my head that people can think that way and think that they're right. Like, I know a lot of the time when people have certain opinions, that's what, that's what annoys me about like Jason Fong and stuff like that. When people have opinions on like insulin and things like that, I had Dr. Spencer Nadolsky on my podcast and we talked about this and in medical school and stuff, they are taught that insulin's the fat store and hormone, et cetera, et cetera, textbook stuff. But once you actually look into it and you look into the studies and have some real life practical experience with it, you begin to understand that you, you can still lose fat with insulin present. You can still lose fat with it, eating lots of carbohydrates. So while you might've once had a certain opinion, if you actually start to look into it 
and your opinion's wrong and you realize that it's wrong and you continue to have that wrong opinion, even though all the evidence is stating against it, people just get stuck in their ways and they don't want to admit that they're wrong. So they just keep going and it snowballs and it snowballs. And there's just far too many people with plain wrong opinions in this day and age. Like there's nothing wrong with having your own opinion. But when it's wrong, it's wrong. Like, there's nothing wrong with intermittent fasting. There's nothing wrong with uh, the ketogenic diet. But the the reason why it works is is because it creates a deficit. Now, is there other benefits from intermittent fasting? How you feel, etc. Maybe I done a two day water fast to try it out. I felt like shit. I couldn't train. I didn't get any of them benefits. Is there benefits to a ketogenic diet? Satiation, like feeling full, uh, switching to a state of ketosis. You might feel better if you're using fat as fuel. Maybe there is. Would it, would it be worth uh, giving up all carbohydrates for me? No, definitely not at all. But the problem I have is when people say that things work for reasons that they don't work and when they're wrong and don't admit that they're wrong and then just keep being wrong just for the sake of being a fucking idiot. Yeah, everyone, everyone's taking things to extremes these days. And I think I think the main point we've gotten across today is just that it it is simpler than you think. It's not that difficult if you... If you want to learn more about all of these things, make sure you go follow Sean Casey. He is uh, he's on TikTok, YouTube, Instagram, Twitter. I think a, a yeah, bunch I'm of on, I'm on amazing, <laughs> amazing content. If you want to learn more about all the things that we talked about today, I think this episode is super beneficial for people, just at least to to open their eyes to this idea. Because you know, it seems like there's a lot of people out there who are trying to lose, you know, five, ten pounds, especially coming into summer here. Um, so thank you so much for coming on, Sean. Really appreciate it. I had a great time talking it's to you. And uh, yeah, where can, where can people find you? Yeah, so on basically everything, I'm SKC Fitness. So TikTok, Instagram, Twitter, and then on YouTube and podcast, it is the Sean Casey Fitness podcast or else Sean Casey Fitness on YouTube. And then www.seancaseyfitness.com for my website. So that is me. You'll, you'll find me somewhere. Just type in Sean Casey. But if you type in Sean Casey, you might get the Red Sox player. So you need to put them, um, you need to put fitness after it. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. And, and uh, congratulations on 500,000 on TikTok. That's awesome. Man. Yeah. Crazy, crazy. <laughs> It's funny how we've kind of, uh, we've kind of like, I feel like our paths have kind of been similar. Like I first posted it and I just saw your post when you hit 500k of like your July uh, uh-huh. account. And that was when I first posted, like I went back to some screenshots back in July. It was yeah. like back then I had like, you know, 10 followers and it's like, we've kind of grown yeah. at like a similar rate uh-huh. and now we're both around 500,000 and, you know, got yeah. our podcast, whatnot. And, you know, it's, if we talk about different stuff, but it's all, it's all in the same realm and it's all hopefully people find it helpful. I think that they do. Um, but again, yeah, thank you so much for, uh, for joining me, Sean. I hope that everyone enjoyed this episode and I will talk to you later. Peace. Peace.